what's happening everyone welcome back to sense of south jersey with me kellen for another fragrance video today i'm going to be doing another installment of my then and now series where we compare and contrast the pros and cons of the vintage and current formulation of a fragrance today's fragrance that we're going to be taking a look at is the 1978 Aromatic Fougere released from the house of Azaro. It is none other than Azaro Pour Homme. So I have a vintage version and a current version, and we're going to break it down from its presentation to what we think the notes are, to its performance, and then I'll give my overall thoughts and tell you if it's worth purchasing the vintage or if the current formulation is just okay, and you can stick with that. Um, you know, before we get started, if it is your first time here, guys, and you enjoy this type of fragrance content, make sure to subscribe to support the channel. If you have an Instagram, check out the Sense of South Jersey Instagram page for news and updates on the channel. Folks, Photos of fragrances from my collection and daily scent of the day stories. Um, also, if you have a TikTok, go ahead and follow Sabro88 for all your champagne savoring needs. And I just want to say one thing, guys. Thanks so much for your patience. I know I haven't made a video in just under about two months. I think it's been about five weeks, maybe six weeks at this point. Uh, with the end of the year, when you're in a profession like mine with sales, the last couple weeks of the year are very important, along with starting out in the, the new year, starting out strong, as well as not only the Thanksgiving holiday, but Christmas, shopping, all the parties with my family, my girlfriend's family, and my friends, of course, on New Year's. It's been crazy, but I'm back now, and I wanted to, again, uh, I appreciate your patience. I wanted to let you guys know that, too. So I got some videos that are going to be ready to drop soon, but we're going to get started with this one. So without wasting any more time, Let's take a look at Azara Poron. Okay, let's compare and contrast the presentation for the vintage versus the current formulation. So first, let's take a look at the box. Let's take a look at the vintage box first. So it's black with the big silver A there for Azaro. You have that A on the top. On the back here, you've got some brand information. Sorry about that selfie ring light. It's just going to reflect. you got this signature, Azaro. You know, it says the size and concentration right there. It's an eau de toilette. This is a 30 ml. Um, you know, it has, you know, made in France. On the bottom, you've got a, looks like a batch code stamped in there and the barcode. This batch code for this one is 66008H. That's the letter H. So it's, it's different from the, the new box. And here you can take a look at the current formulation box. Here's a side-by-side. -side. So you see the differences here. Um, on the top, you don't have the A like you do on the vintage. The A is much smaller. Still says the Zara. Still says the size and concentration. This is a 100 ml um, spray bottle. Again, it's an eau de toilette concentration. On the back here, you can see the differences. That signature is not there. You know, the brand information is probably the same. Um, on the bottom here, you got a little bit of a different setup. Still pretty much the same here. This batch code is, let's see, it's stamped in there. There's two. But this one really doesn't matter. I know the vintage would be more important. Anyway, so the boxes are similar, got the same look, but definitely the graphics on it are different. The size of the lettering is different, and um, there, there's a little bit of uh, you know similarities, but it's not quite the same. Now, taking a look at the bottle, let's take a look at the vintage bottle here. Again, large A on the bottle here, size and concentration. You've got the black cap, but there's a silver stripe at the top here that goes all the way around, and then you have Azara written there with some etched in stuff or, or embossed glass at the bottom here. And that is different from the current one. You take the cap off, you can hold it by the cap and you see a silver sprayer, no neck cover. So the crimp is showing there. Let's see the distribution. I'll spray some on my hand. This is where I have the vintage anyway. So kind of a puff of fragrance. It kind of goes all over the place. It's, it's not really direct, um, you know, so nice looking bottle, but this one, the newer one, you can see it's a little bit more, it's just a sticker, obviously it's a larger bottle. They got rid of that silver stripe. There's nothing on the top. Um, the bottom has everything etched in the glass, so it's not embossed. You take the cap off. However, they did increase you know, the strength of the sprayer and the neck here too. We'll see the distribution. So that's much bigger spray. It's much more direct. It goes further out. Um, and it says Azaro Pour Ohm there. And you can hear the cap kind of clicks in. You know, So it's a nice looking bottle. And Azaro is embossed on the bottom where it is not on the vintage. So again, they look somewhat similar. Maybe someone that wouldn't know anything about the fragrance would be able to pick that up, but there's some definite differences. Okay, so as far as the notes go, you know, it, it's your standard fougere. This is one of the, the godfathers of aromatic fougeres. You know, you have your lavender, you have your anise. That's a prevalent note in both the vintage and the current formulation. So you're going to smell that. Um, it's not as sharp with the vintage as it is with the current, believe it or not. Then there's citrus, there's green, and there's woods. Uh, oak moss is one. There's going to be probably more uh, of a concentration of, of notes that are banned now in terms of the, the level of amount that you can put in the fragrance and the vintage. But the notes 
notes are the same. So um, uh, not too much to talk about there with this fragrance when it comes to the notes. Okay, as far as the performance goes, for the vintage, I'm not really getting much past four hours from when I've worn it and I, when I've done the side-by-side -side comparison. Many nights, because I've had this video prepared for a while, I just haven't made it, because again, I haven't had the time. So what I've noticed is that this is gonna be around the four hour mark, and this one is around the five or six. Not a huge performer, not beast mode, but again, inexpensive fragrance, so you don't expect that much of a performance. Even with the vintage, I assume that the vintage would be a lot more of a, of a long-lasting fragrance but it's really not it actually I think it may last less than than this one does um, there's another fragrance here called Azara Pour Homme Urban Spray same thing it's vintage Azara Pour Homme but just in a different bottle an urban bottle like make to be easier to carry around it has um, the built-in sprayer here you can see so uh, performance is pretty much the same the the current one in my opinion in my experience seems to last a little bit longer Okay, guys, time for me to go over my overall thoughts on both the vintage Azara Pour Homme and the current formulation. So I want to read something from Fragrantica. It's from a user called Tommaso7, and it's again off Fragrantica. He wrote a little blurb. This was back when I was researching my notes for this video and to see if, you know, what I see online, if I agree with it or if I disagree with it, so kind of make my overall opinion. So he wrote this, and I'm going to read it here. The new bottle with the black caps and black sprayers are way better than the previous bottles with the silver sprayers. The new ones spray out much more fragrance and it lasts a lot longer. So, you know, and it's more non-alcoholic, he wrote. And, and I tend to agree with that. I think that, again, these sprayers on these older ones are cheaper. And this is probably a late 90s, early 2000s version. And then when I go to this urban spray, so just to tell you about this, in the early 2000s, they tried to relaunch Azara Pour Homme. It's the same thing, and this is vintage, but it comes in this ridiculous plastic case which I don't know how is more, I don't know why it's more portable than say the regular one, but I guess it's the built-in sprayer, which mine, it fell right out of that case and broke here, but this one attaches right back on. So if you can get these urban sprayer, they're not expensive, you know, and again, this is a better better distribution. It's still vintage Azaro. Um, you can take a look at that there. It's kind of cool. I, I like the built-in sprayer. Um, so I just noticed that, that you know, the, they're basically the same scent, right? I, I think that the, 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 new, the newer version is a little bit like harsher and sharper, I should say, sharper with a little bit more ruggedness. The the vintage is almost a cleaner version of what I'm used to because I never tried the vintage until I decided to buy it. So they're both inexpensive. The vintage isn't that much more money, so it's easy to get, and it's still they're still out there, especially in these like little 30 mLs. Um, you know, this is inexpensive as well and very easy to find. It's still being made, which is great. The only downside to the vintage is if you get it, there's a potential spoil risk. And, and these are from two different sellers and they both smell the same to me. I really can't notice a difference, the vintage regular bottle and this urban spray. So I don't think the differences are that much when it comes to the two versions. I think that the newer, or excuse me, the, yeah, the newer one does last a little bit longer. And I also think that it, um, it's a little bit richer smelling. It's not as like bland. And, and that's usually the opposite when you're comparing a vintage to a current formulation. So it, it's kind of funny how that worked out. And again, I, I, these are two different sellers, two different vintage. They're not spoiled. But this one is like a cleaner version where this one's a little bit rugger, a little rug, more rugged, a little bit more dark. And I, I sort of like that. So um, those are my thoughts for the differences between the vintage and current formulations of Azaro Poro. All right, guys, it's time for the verdict. Is the vintage version worth it? So you probably could guess by all the things that I've said so far. I don't really think so. I think the current version is just fine and I actually might like it better. However, the, the positive thing is that the vintage of Azara Pour Homme is not that expensive. So if you absolutely have to satisfy that curiosity of getting the vintage version, go for it. It's not gonna cost you a lot of money. Look for the Urban Spray, um, you know, but I wouldn't buy anything more than a 30 ml and I wouldn't spend anything more than 35, 40 bucks on the vintage. And if you're looking at someone who's charging 60, 70, 80, $100 for a vintage bottle, 100 ml, do not waste your money just get the current formula it, it's perfect they have the whole body line they have an aftershave actually here's the aftershave right here you can see aftershave and what's cool about it this is a current formulation is it's a spray version too so um, you can spray it all over your neck and i shaved today i did the whole azaro body line the body wash the aftershave bomb the deodorant the deodorant spray as you guys know i like to do and it, it all smells fantastic so overall i don't think the vintage is worth it at all with azaro pour Rome. some fragrances it is some it's not, but it is inexpensive. So again, if you have to buy it, go ahead and do it, but don't, don't spend more than $35, $40. But the current one is, I think, the better choice. 
Okay, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for me. That's another installment of Then and Now featuring Azara Poor Ohm. So in the comments section, please let me know, what do you prefer? Do you own the vintage? Do you own the current? Do you own both? Which one would you prefer if you had to pick one? Do you agree with me? Or do you think that the vintage is, is the better choice, the better way to go? You know, I always appreciate all the interaction. Make sure to subscribe. Follow the Instagram page and the TikTok page if you have one. I hope you all had a safe and happy new year, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.